And very excited tonight we have Vicky Hartley, who's the Deputy Chair of Dress for Success in Sydney. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yes, I'm so excited because Vicky's story is amazing and she does wonderful work to help disadvantaged women. So we're going to talk a bit about that later. So firstly, we want to start with our questions. And I do have my boards back after a little bit of complaint that I'd let them go. So the first question is, hey, what's your story? My story is that I grew up in a lower middle class family in the middle of England. Yes. Uh, a horrible little town called Wolverhampton. And I was uh, very privileged that my parents worked really hard and able to be able to send me to university. And I was the first person in my family to go there. Wow. So wow. That, that was really, really um, a starting point for me because that gave me the skills and the education and the career to be able to go out and become an accountant and create a, what I call a portable career that made me able to travel to this wonderful country. Gorgeous. So when did you arrive here? So I moved to Australia in 2000. I'd been working in investment banking in London and prior to that I'd been working as an accountant in the insurance industry. So very heavily male dominated yes. organisations yeah. where I was often the only female in the room and <gasps> uh, the only yeah. female in the management position. and. Uh, the only female out at corporate functions. Wow, that would be, and I, and and I also know it's quite common now for you know for women to be in that situation. It's great to be able to talk about that it was difficult and it still is difficult for women to be in what is a very male-dominated area. It's still really hard. I, yeah. In fact, I was um, just reading a quote on the way here from uh, Michelle Obama that said that women are now almost getting there, but by the time they get to sit at the table with the men, they're so grateful that they're not pushing for change any further. And she was That's saying today that the, we should be telling our daughters or showing our daughters by continuing to push. Yeah, great. Um, and great. that's one of the reasons why I feel so proud to have always been a role model to the females in the organisations where I've worked and to be able to set the trail for them and to be able to mentor and coach them as I've been on my journey climbing, climbing the corporate career ladder. Awesome. Need more women like you coming up and showing that we're doing the work, you know? Fantastic. Yes, we do. What's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I've ever received is to take a leap of faith and go for a job or a career or do something that you think you're not quite ready to do. Because if you won't back yourself, nobody else will. Love that. If you won't back yourself, nobody else will. And I've that done one. that many, many times now in my career, both in the decision to move to Australia, yeah. which I just <laughs> did, <laughs> just bought a took plane ticket, leap. took that leap, rented, quit my job and rented out my house and got on a plane and wow. found a job over here and made some really you know, smart what I think is smart, I decided to live with Australian people and make Australian friends and not just do the English travelling thing. Fantastic. Because it's true, you have to really go into that place. I know a lot of us suffer from that imposter syndrome, which is kind of like you just have to step into what you want to be and what you want to do. And I think that's a classic case of just back yourself. I do it. Yeah, and I've done that along in my career as well. Mm. So when I've been offered roles that I wasn't perhaps fully ready for, I've, I've actually taken them, whereas I know sometimes, particularly women, are reluctant to take them if they're not ready. And again, I love that story that men, if they're 10% qualified, will say they're ready, and women, if they're 95% qualified, will say that they're not. Isn't that amazing? So you just so have true. to back yourself, and don't expect to be 100% ready, because if you are, that's probably not the job for you. <laughs> I love that, that's so true. Funny, I've just been speaking to some of the mentor that I have, and I, I have that thing of, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Everything has to be really ready in the right way. And it's just like, I have to throw that out and actually just do it and step over the line. And it, it is scary, but at the same time, there's a great freedom in doing it. So I love that advice, awesome. Well, the latest thing I've done in that is by putting my hand up to be the acting CEO of Dress for Success Sydney, which Hi. I know we're going to talk about later, but uh, I'm the deputy chair at the moment and our wonderful CEO is going on maternity leave and they were wondering about who would take over from her. So 
So I put my hand up and that, so that'll be my surf, first CEO role. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm really excited. I've got another four weeks till she goes. Yeah. And oh, wow. Oh, what a journey. I mm. love it. I love it. Whole new different place you'll be in there. And um, how long is it? Obviously, a year usually for the maternity. Oh, she's only taking six months. So oh, okay. when that six months is over, I'll go back to being the chair. But it's a wonderful opportunity for Great someone on the board yeah. to step in and have a look at the organisation, which is very much. Uh, it's only nine years old, so it's Shows still growing. And great trust that she has in you. Yes. <laughs> and uh, which is a big compliment. So, question three: What was the catalyst for success for you? For me, it was um, probably resilience. Um, when I was growing up, I moved around a lot mm. from school to school because of my father's work. Um, I was a slightly introverted, I am slightly introverted, I know that, which is fairly normal for an accountant, but I'm on that cusp of introvert, extrovert, yes. social. Yes. So moving around really made me resilient. I had to continually put myself in new environments, catch up in classes where I'd perhaps be behind on the syllabus, make new friends, uh, take up new right. sports, yeah. and really just put myself out there. And I think that's really helped me in my career. Firstly, as an accountant where I had lots of clients, and right from the beginning in my career, I was talking to board directors and senior executives. and. And looking back now, that's a lot of trust to put in a, a 21, 22-year-old <laughs> yeah, accounting graduate amazing. working on these big deals. Yeah. So I think that really made a big difference for me. And it's true, I think, that if you're used to any sort of change like that, it gets that muscle working where you kind of go, OK, well, this is part of my life and I have to work with it. And I love that. Gosh, yes. Good, good catalyst for change for you. Next thing is what's the tools for challenges that you use? Well, it's funny you should say that. One of them is reminding myself of the imposter syndrome. <laughs> so for me, that was a bit of a light bulb moment because I'd always felt that perhaps eventually I'd get found out and people would realise that I wasn't actually as good as they thought <laughs> I was. And then I realised that everybody feels that way. Everybody, everybody. It's everybody. amazing. I cannot tell you. I was just saying actually to someone today, I watched a... An amazing documentary on this very famous um, curator in the new in a New York gallery, who's renowned. The documentary on they said, oh, and I heard them saying, "Oh, they're going to find out that I'm not really good." And I'm thinking, "Gosh, you're bad thinking." You know what I mean? Oh, and, and when you talk to people, it's amazing how many people do it, and then they tell you how amazing they think you are, and then you tell them, "Actually, I think you're amazing," <laughs> and you realise that we're all doing it to ourselves, yeah. and we just need to. To own, own it, it. and, and yeah. I think the thing is that I have is around because I, you know, obviously do my personal branding with people, and people have a real resistance to being an expert. And I think it's a great way and exercise to own that mm. because, in there, you go, What makes an expert? Actually, it's you believing that because you've done the experience, you don't have to have a certificate. Yeah. And most of the people that do have certificates, it's never enough anyway. No. They're always going to do more courses. Oh, I'll just get another one and then I'll feel more fulfilled. It doesn't work. Don't go for it. Just own where you are. And you get know? experience, talk to people, put yeah. yourself into different positions, different situations yeah. outside your comfort zone, a bit of stretch. Yeah, no, love it, love it. No. Now, um, what do you think the issue is with society today? Mobile phones. <laughs> Everybody face yes. down at the bus station. People don't talk to each other anymore. Yes. Parents don't talk to their children. You see them out at dinner tables and immediately the phone is out. Not just the parents, the children, the kids are on the iPads, the headphones are on. Yeah. I really worry about the next generation coming through and the communication skills that they're, they're losing through this obsession and addiction to the devices. Because there's already um, real issues with connection um, and young people, a greater rate of suicide now because they don't have that ability to relate to others, therefore relate to themselves. Yeah. So it is a, it's a big issue, I agree with that. That and helicopter parenting. So yes. <laughs> we used to go out and play with our friends in the street. Now they sit on their computers and they play with each other on the screen. That's not but it's bizarre. <gasps> they don't often play together in the same space. And I think 
they don't talk to I, I, I hear teenagers talking because we've got one at home and mm. they don't talk to each other nicely they don't have a two way conversation they just yell at each other like they're in a computer game well my big thing is it's about empathy and a lack of empathy yes. is the issue and I actually put it down to the estrogen in food but let's not go there so anyway there's a whole issue <laughs> around that so but it plays out in those in the children it mm. plays out that they don't feel what someone else is that this is why the bullying it becomes so prevalent yeah. and because they're not feeling what it's like for others so I don't know with technology I'm doing a bit of work around you know future you know f the future proof of us as humans and adults and what that means in our humanity side to embrace technology but still you know kind of find out who we are in that which is the big question now yeah. awesome so uh, number six is teach me something I don't know. So this is about sustainable styling, which is something Dress for Success is very passionate about. Yes. So if the next one million people bought a second-hand piece of clothing rather than a brand new piece of clothing, mm. six million kilograms of carbon monoxide would not escape into the atmosphere. Wow. That's a lot. A lot of bad carbon. That is amazing, isn't it? Wow. So next time you're buying something from a fast fashion store, think about that and go to somewhere perhaps and think about buying something pre-loved mm. that's probably better quality and that you'll wear more times. What a great thing to know. So we'll definitely put that, we're putting that in your notes as yes. well and we're <laughs> going to share that as well. It's, it's a brilliant statistic. Brilliant statistic. I no And the idea. landfill as well. Yeah. If, if anyone watched that War on Waste and the, the amount of clothes that go into landfill is ridiculous. At Dress for Success in Sydney, we get 85,000 garments donated every year. And that's going up every month. Now people are more aware of the war on waste and wanting to be more sustainable and more ecologically friendly. And so it's going up because people are... <gasps> people are more aware of it. So people are making more donations to us. And we use those clothes for our clients, for the women that we work with. So. Yeah. But as the amount of clothes go up, goes up, we need to get more clients. Otherwise, we end up with more clothing than we can yeah. than we can manage. Yeah. And we want to make sure that none of that goes into landfill if we can help it. Yeah. So. No, awesome, amazing what you're doing. Yeah. <gasps> What's the biggest shift you've had in your life? I probably had two. The first was yes. moving from England to Australia, which I which I did when I was 30, which is a little bit older than most people do it. So I yeah. was a little bit more sure about why I was doing it and what I wanted to get out of it. The second shift I think is happening at the moment with my shift out of my executive corporate role as a CFO. Previously, that's what I was doing. Um, mm. And to working with the not-for-profits. So the work that I'm doing mm. with um, domestic violence, the work that I'm doing with Bondi Beach Cottage and the work that I'm doing with um, Dress for Success Sydney. So all of which are organisations that help disadvantaged women. And I really believe that every woman and every family should be treated with dignity and that's yeah, really beautiful. what I'm now shifting. I'm very in a very privileged position to be able to shift my skills into helping that happen. What was the thing that actually... Um made the shift what made you go I want to make this change uh, there were a few things um, that happened in my life the first was getting involved in the Bernardo's find a family program and getting involved with some of the kids in that program who are disadvantaged and what that means to them for their lives right. and their potential future prospects then being invited to be on the board of a domestic violence charity and visiting the refuges and mm. meeting some of the women who've survived that horrible yeah. society yeah. problem. And it just evolved from there to being on the board of Dress for Success and the fact that at Dress for Success it's very tangible to see the two and a half thousand women that we're supporting in New South Wales mm. each year come into the showroom. They come in and they have a one hour personal styling session they get career coaching, CV skills, and then a lot of them actually get a job and they come back. See, it's amazing. I didn't know that. I thought it was just dressing them, but it's career, it's, it's CV. Package. How fantastic is that? What a yeah. great cause and a, and a great thing that we need in our society, more of that support. Yeah, and, I, and it was those things that just made me realise that I 
didn't need to keep working in financial services. <laughs> <laughs> and um, maybe now is a good time to do something that was more rewarding and giving something back for all the wonderful things that I've had in, in my life. And that um, mm. thing, things are just things. And well, I don't need any more things. So I just Great wanted to... Uh, to give back to give back because i see finance as such a creative thing really i know because i have i've done talks with a lot of accountants they're like oh but it's not really creative account i'm going yes it is it's incredibly creative could be very creative with money but i think now for you having have that understanding it's like a great tool that you have that you can share and help others which is awesome and part of what i liked about being an accountant was working with people so i often ended up managing large teams of accountants so as a CFO, I, I had a team, um, a, a fairly small team, because that was at a fintech, so fintech's a fairly yeah. small company. But prior to that, I managed a team of 40 accountants. So to me, it was always about got people, people and, yeah, as well as yeah, the technical fantastic. side. I mean, I always liked the technical side too, but that was quite logical and a little bit creative. But yeah. it was mainly, it was people, making yeah. sure people were engaged in what they were doing. You spend a lot of time at work so I always wanted my teams to enjoy that time. Gorgeous and that's what we need to make sure and continue to make sure is that our culture builds in the right way at organisations and it's fantastic that you're in so many places and doing wonderful things. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you and uh, I'm so glad that you joined us tonight and we'll see you next week on Mrs V Shift. Have a great week and uh, sign out from us. Thank you.